Cheap closed loop AIO liquid coolers are everywhere these days. You can pick up a good quality 360 millimeter unit for under a hundred pounds. And there's absolutely loads to choose from at places like Scan and Amazon. This ID Cooling FX 360 INF fits into the budget AIO sector with a price of just £79.99. It comes with two ARGB lighting zones, PWM fans, a rotatable infinity mirror pump top and a three year warranty. But what kind of performance should you expect from a budget AIO like this? Well, let's find out. Okay, so this is the FX 360 INF from ID Coolant, the company's latest 360 millimeter AIO cooler. It comes in at a pretty budget price at just £79.99 in the UK, and you can pick it up from Amazon. The FX 360 features an infinity mirror display that projects six ARGB lighting loops with a manually rotatable pump head to support insulation in any orientation. According to ID Coolant, the Generation 7 pump runs at up to 2,900 RPM for efficient and quiet operation keeping temperatures low even at peak CPU performance. The aluminium radiator is equipped with 12 waterways and a high density Finstack with standard 27 millimeter thickness core for optimal heat dissipation while the included AS120 fans have a PWM speed up to 2000 rpm, hydraulic bearing and anti-vibration rubber mounts to keep noise output low. This is compatible with all current Intel and AMD desktop platforms so Intel LGA 1851, 1700, 1200, LM5X, etc. And AMD AM4, AM5. It's an all aluminium radiator. You can see if you take a closer look at the back, there's 12 waterways on the radiator and it's a dense fin stack, standard 27 millimeter thickness. And it's got kind of a satin finish, black coat into it. it looks high quality, it's nice and smooth. But if you see on this edge, I don't know whether you can see, it does show fingerprints up pretty easily, but this is not something that you're gonna be handling once it's installed into the system. You shouldn't really need to touch the radiator. So fingerprints shouldn't be an issue at all. Take a closer look at the tubing. You can see at the radiator side, the tubing is fixed to the radiator. So there's no rotation or movement at that side of the tubes. Uh, you'll find that these are crimped into a barbed fitting. So there's no movement or anything at all. The tubing length seems reasonably decent on this. It's a 360 millimeter radiator, but the tubing is 465 millimeters long. That's a little longer than we see on some 360s. Usually they're around about 400 to 410 millimeters. So installing this, in a case, maybe at the front with the tube at the bottom, it should still have plenty of length on the tubes to reach up to the CPU, no worries. The tubing is a low evaporation rubber, but it is covered with a black braided sleeving. I've said this hundreds of times probably now, the sleeving used to be seen as a premium feature. It's not so much anymore. It's just a standard feature in most AIOs. The actual CPU block on the top of it, it's an infinity mirror design. There's a logo on there and this top can be rotated. So no matter which orientation you install the cooler, whether it's this way or this way around, you can rotate that top cover to make sure that it's always facing in the correct direction. It's quite a compact unit, silver around the top and then black towards the bottom. And it comes with some upper mounting brackets pre-attached or pre-installed to the base of the CPU block. These are used for both Intel and AMD installation. So you don't need to mess around swapping these depending on whether you're installing on an AMD or an Intel platform. The tubing at the CPU block, that's on 90 degree rotary fittings. So there is movement and adjustment of those tubes, which is handy sometimes when you've got it installed into the motherboard, just makes it easier to arrange the position of the tubing with those being adjustable. Connections to the pump. This is quite a funny one actually, because in the official specifications for the FX360, it says that the pump is PWM control, but that's only a three pin voltage control standard motherboard header. I don't know whether that's just a mix up in the specifications, but it is a standard three pin motherboard header. It's also got a standard three pin five volt ARGB connection, and it also splits off so you can connect the fans to this and then just use one connection on the motherboard. The cold plate comes with a protective 
plastic sticker over it. You must remove this before installation. You'll have serious cooling problems if you leave that on by accident. But the good thing with this warning label is the color of it. It's very noticeable. Some are just completely clear and it is easy to miss removing those sometimes. You'll see with that removed, you'll notice there is no pre-applied thermal compound, which is fine for experienced users applying thermal compound to the base of the cooler or the CPU is quite an easy task. But for novice users, it's always good to have that pre-applied to the base of the cooler. It just stops any worries when applying it yourself, whether you've got the right amount on or whether you've put it in the correct position. It's good to have it pre-applied, but ID cooling does include a decent sized tube of thermal compound in with the cooler. So if you do get it wrong, you don't put enough on or you mess it up somehow, you can wipe it off and reapply thermal compound and have a second go. The actual cold plate is a microscived copper cold plate. I don't know how it comes across on the camera, but you can actually feel and see the microscived area there. It does slightly protrude from the bottom of the copper block. It's not often you see that. I have seen it once or twice before, but usually that's a reasonably, not so much flat because it is a convex surface, but it is reasonably smooth. You can't usually feel where the microscived channels are. With 20 years of PC manufacturing experience, CyberPower PC are the best in the business. With the largest range of parts available in the UK, our team of experienced builders will expertly build and test each system to be delivered to you the very next day. Check out cyberpowersystem.co.uk. So onto the fans, these come pre-installed to the radiator. So if you want to install the cooler in the roof of the case or the front of the case, with the fans in a push configuration, that's the perfect way to have the fans installed to the radiator. You can remove them and install them on the opposite side. Also, the screws are a good length, so if you need to screw through a metal panel through the fan and into the radiator, their screws are long enough to do that. There are also daisy chain fans. These are ID Cooling AS120 fans. They daisy chain to each other, and then they go off to a longer extension lead got a decent length to that extension lead so no matter whether you've got this in the front or the top you should be able to have enough length on that to route it round where you need to and then back to the motherboard or a fan or RGB hub if you want to do that. PWM control so they have a standard four pin PWM motherboard header and like the pump they have a standard three pin five volt ARGB connection and it also splits off so you can connect this to something else and then connect it up to the header on your motherboard. The fans have a speed range of 300 to 2000 RPM, PWM controlled, maximum airflow of 58 cubic feet per minute, maximum air pressure of 1.94 millimeters H2O, maximum noise output of 27.2 decibels, a hydraulic bearing and a four pin PWM connection. So that's a quick rundown of the features and specifications of the ID Cooling FX 360 INF. If you want to see more details about the cooler, see some more images, the full specifications and features, make sure you head over to kickguru.net where there will be a full written review page for the ID Cooling FX 360. So now we've gone through all that, let's get this installed on the test system and see how it performs. Included with the cooler is all the required installation hardware, an Intel specific backplate, standoffs for both Intel and AMD installation, Intel mounting brackets, two types of AMD mounts, one for vertical and one for horizontal mounting, four thumb screws for tightening the CPU block in place, 12 Phillips head screws for mounting the radiator to the chassis, three tubing clips and a tube of thermal compound, and a tool for fastening down the standoffs. All the wiring is pre attached to the cooler and fans. Our test system uses an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X CPU, so I'll quickly run you through the installation process on AMD AM5. First, remove the stock AMD plastic mounting brackets from the motherboard, then screw in the AMD standoffs to the motherboard backplate. Select the AMD mounting brackets that you want to use and fasten them to the standoffs using the four thumb screws. Apply some thermal compound to the CPU IHS. I like to use the five blob method as it gives good coverage. Next, lower the CPU block down onto the CPU aligned with the mount and fasten it down evenly and progressively tightening the spring-loaded screws. Then for the wiring, connect the ARGB connection from the pump to the fans and connect the female end to a motherboard 3-pin 5-volt ARGB header. Connect the fan power cable to a 4-pin PWM header on the motherboard, use the labelled CPU underscore fan. And then finally, connect the pump power to a motherboard header which is usually labelled AIO pump or 
or CPU OPT. Then mount the radiator in your case and that's the installation complete. So that's the installation process. It's quite easy to install this cooler. It comes with the fans pre-installed to the radiator so you don't have to mess about installing fans if you're running it in this orientation. If you want to switch the fans to a pull configuration, we'll have to swap those over. It also comes with the brackets pre-attached to the CPU block and it's the same brackets used for Intel and AMD installation but you do have to install the actual mounting brackets to the motherboard. In terms of the wiring, that's simple as well. There's no proprietary connections. Everything connects up directly to the motherboard, but you can, if you want, connect it to a RGB hub or a fan controller if necessary, but it is really quick to install. You should have this installed in your system in about 20 minutes maximum for somebody, even a novice, should be able to install it in that kind of time. So now we've got it installed on our AMD 9950X test system. Let's take a look at the thermal performance. We've run our usual thermal performance test that we run on all AIO liquid coolers. If you want to check out the full testing methodology, head over to kitguru.net where there will be a written review for the ID Cooling FX360 INF. Make sure you head over and check that out. First, let's look at noise output as this will give us a good understanding of the thermal performance based on the noise. At maximum fan speed, the ID Cooling FX360 INF is one of the quietest coolers we have tested so far on the 9950X system, equaling the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3360 at 43 decibels but fan speed is relatively low at just over 1800 rpm so let's see how this translates to thermal performance in our first manual oc test the coolers are running with fans and pump speed maxed out the id cooling fx 360 inf manages cpu temperature okay at this point there's no sign of overheating but it's quite low in the chart with an average load temperature of 64 degrees c over ambient the focus on low noise and relatively low fan speed could be a contributing factor here but it performs on par with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3360, which has similar low noise. So let's see how it performs in the noise normalized test. In the noise normalized test, all coolers fan speed is reduced to hit a maximum noise output of 40 decibels. To reach the 40 decibels limit, the FX360 fan speed only has to be lowered by 200 RPM. So the performance isn't affected massively, but compared to some of the best coolers, it's not producing great thermals with an average load temperature of 66 degrees C over ambient. But again, it's equal with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 and there's no sign of overheating. In the PBO test, the important metric is clock multiplier as the CPU automatically adjusts clock speed based on a target temperature. So the difference in CPU temperature between coolers is close. The best coolers in this test will hit a clock multiplier of around 52.6 times, but the ID Cooling FX360 only manages an average clock multiplier of 52.1, which means the CPU is running at approximately 50 megahertz slower with this cooler compared to the best. It's not a huge performance loss, but it is one of the lowest scores we have had on this system so far, and it's a little disappointing. So there's no real surprises with this cooler. It is a budget AIO. It's priced at just $79.99. In terms of the performance, it's okay for a budget cooler, but there are better budget options out there that perform significantly better than this ID Cooling FX360. You just take the Montec Hyperflow ARGB as an example. That's about £10 cheap in this currently at scan.co.uk and performance is better than this at both maximum fan speed, 40 decibels, and in the AMD Precision Boost Overdrive test. Other minor negatives I've got with it is the thermal compound. It doesn't come pre-applied. You do have to apply that yourself. ID cooling does include a decent size tube of thermal compound, but for some users that might be daunting. It's nice to have it pre-applied. It just makes the installation a little more simple and less daunting for novice users. The pump speed control in the official specifications, ID Cooling says it's a PWM speed control for the pump, but it's actually only a three pin standard motherboard header, so it's voltage control. Other than that, the installation is quick and simple. Those pre-installed brackets to the CPU block and the fans being pre-installed to the radiator, that speeds up the installation. It's easy to follow in the installation manual. It's quiet as well at maximum fan speed. Even with the fans running at almost 1900 RPM, it registered just 43 decibels bells in our noise test which is one of the lowest out of all the coolers we've tested so far and the RGB lighting effects 
I'm quite surprised with how good these are. Even on these fans with the semi-opaque blades, there isn't a lot of light bleed around the individual LEDs. And that pump top cover, it's nothing out of the ordinary. No LCD display on it or anything like that. But it looks okay with the infinity mirror and that ring of RGB lighting. And you can also rotate that pump top so that the orientation matches the installation position. So overall, it's not a bad budget cooler, but there are some other alternatives out there that are slightly cheaper and will outperform this. So that's the ID Cooling FX360 INF. Let me know what you think of this cooler in the YouTube comment section. And if you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber of KitGuru. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to our store and pick up some of our merch. Or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.